the following is a presentation of Main Street Media, your source for news, sports, and information on Main Street in Middle Tennessee. Thirty years of the best sports talk in Middle Tennessee, featuring Tennessee Radio Hall of Famer George Plaster, Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame coach Watson Brown, and Young Guns Billy Derrick and Michael Sindrick. And now, here's your host, George Plaster. Hello again, everybody. Welcome in. Beautiful Monday in Nashville with an awful lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. Head up to the plateau and say hello to Coach Watson Brown. Watson, how are you? Hello, George. Uh, You don't miss me as much since I was on on Friday a little bit, huh? No, but I'm about to cough all over you. Well, go ahead. I'll talk right through it. Whatever you, If you got a cough, just... Just go for it, and I'll keep talking. Keep talking. Billy, turn my <laughs> mic off. I got you. <laughs> there it is. Billy, Billy what are you doing, boy? Did we, did we get the cough going? Yeah, it's gone. He's okay, good. Okay, good. We covered for you, George. Did you watch a lot of football? Oh, yeah. yeah Would the number 30 hours over the weekend be up or down? Ooh. Well, start at 11 and finish about midnight. Uh, and then start at 12 and finish about 10. So I don't have any hours that adds up yeah. to, but that's, a bunch. that's about what I watch. Yeah, that's a bunch. Yeah. Okay, let's get things started really quick. As a lot of you know, Terry McCormick begins each day on the show during football season with his daily Titans update. Terry, how are you? Doing well, George. How are you? Good. Let's get right to the news involving the Titans as though they need any other injury problems. They've got another one. Yeah, a couple of things, actually. Uh, Caleb Farley, according to a report by Ian Rappaport, uh, we we know he left the game yesterday, did not return, and the rumor is, the report is that uh, he has a disc problem in his back again. Now, that was a big issue for him uh, at Virginia Tech. I believe he had two back surgeries while he was there. So that's certainly a concern. Now, obviously, Caleb Farley has not yet panned out as a player uh, in terms of being a, a main contributor in the secondary. And uh, that's certainly been a disappointment thus far. But uh Health-wise, you, you know, you certainly wish the best for him. And then the other thing that, you know, this guy kind of gutted it out yesterday is Randy Bullock uh, added to the injury report there just at the very end because he tweaked something in pregame warmups and they had Ryan Stonehouse handle the kickoffs for much of the game yesterday. So, you know, that's something to monitor as well, uh, along with all the other guys who didn't play on Sunday uh, heading into a short week this week against Green Bay. Yeah, Terry, they have definitely got some issues. Is there a point in this, you think, where they put Bullock on any sort of an injury list and look for a kicker short term? Well, uh, I don't think they've gone down that road just yet. Uh, they have yet to issue the injury report, which actually would be kind of a virtual report because there technically was no practice today except for film study and things like that, maybe walkthroughs, but they are scheduled to release an injury report here anytime soon. It'll be interesting to see how they designate Randy Bullock in that. I think we'll know more once that sort of thing uh, is revealed here in the next few minutes. And, uh, you know, it's certainly something that bears monitoring. The thing is, you know, where would you go to find a kicker right now? You're probably just rolling the dice with somebody that's on the scrap heap that, is not good enough to be on somebody else's roster already. You know, they had this whole problem with the kicking carousel 
that uh, they went through before in between Ryan Suckup and Randy Bullock for two or three seasons. And Bullock seemed to finally have solved that somewhat. But uh, we'll see what it looks like as far as his availability. He was able to gut it through uh, yesterday and made a 35-yard field goal that helped put the game away. Terry, what else uh, has come out of the game that you want to talk about? Well, it's kind of interesting. You know, one of the guys that uh, has really made a nice contribution for this team is Chig Okonkwo. Uh, he hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities. Only has seven catches all season long, but he's averaging more than 20 yards a catch. Uh, and he had a 41-yarder yesterday that helped set up that bullet field goal. So that's a guy that, you know, they keep saying they're going to get him more opportunities. They're going to give him more chances. Uh, I think now the time is that they need to go ahead and make good on that promise, get him some more touches. And, uh, you know, Austin Hooper has also kind of come to life over the last two or three weeks. So what they've been lacking at wide receiver in terms of consistency, they might be able to find in the tight ends who are starting to uh, put some production out there. Terry, in your opinion, what is the barrier uh, that involves the tight end position because Hooper had proven long before he ever got here that he was fully capable. And I keep hearing all this crap about, well, it shows up in practice, but we're not able to take it into the game. What's the barrier? I think some of it is the fact that because the offensive line has been depleted and they're very average, that they've had to keep the tight ends in to block. And I think some of that means more of Jeff Swaim and Kevin Rader and less of Austin Hooper and Jake Conquo, who are more of your pass catching tight ends. And then some of that is just that sometimes in the progression, it didn't go uh, to Austin Hooper, but somewhere about three weeks ago, they seem to have resurrected him. And he's been uh, a guy that's uh, been a pretty valuable part of the offense over the last two or three games, uh, because certainly before Nick Westbrook Aquinas, uh, output yesterday, the wide receivers have been largely silent for a while. Yeah, if they're going to get any better on offense, um, Hooper's going to have to be a big piece of this. Terry, appreciate it as always. We'll talk again tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Okay, that's Terry McCormick leading things off with our daily Titans update. And that Titans update is brought to you by the great folks at the Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners. They are proven to be trusted with your most personal asset. The Justin Tucker team, they are Middle Tennessee's most trusted team in realty. Give them a call at 615-906-8458. Don't forget about Sumner Funeral and Cremation. They are sharing their family with yours in your time of need. Now with two convenient locations in Gallatin and Hendersonville and also online at SumnerFuneral.com. Sumner Funeral and Cremation traditional, affordable, and dignified. All right, let's get into today's update. We start with the uh, awful story up in Virginia. A former University of Virginia football player has been suspected of killing three football players and wounding two other students on campus late Sunday night. He's in custody after a manhunt in Charlottesville. Really just demoralizing stuff after, you know, we should be celebrating wins and, and good good moments for players and coaches, but to be celebrating not something like this is awful. Watson, there is no telling what's going to come out of this story. No, George, and I think the two other people injured are football players. Yeah. From what I've been told, so all five are football players, and a former football player that's just been off the team for a year is the one that did the shooting. So this, this is – I tried to think of this as a coach. I can't imagine – I've had deaths within players while they're playing and, and uh, from cancer, from different, all, just tough times. And uh, I never dealt with anything like this. So this, this is for those families. How about getting that phone call, oh. George? How about getting that phone call? Everybody keep those families in your thoughts and prayers. Got to. I, this, I this, this is hard to even talk about. To be it real. is. Awful, awful stuff there. So prayers up to to their, those players and everybody involved. Uh, George, moving on to more college football. Vandy in Tennessee is going to kick off at 6.30 Central Time next Saturday on the SEC Network. So for all the Vol fans coming in town, I'm sure they're excited about, uh, about a nighttime kickoff here in Nashville. Yep. Uh, 
quite a few of the Tennessee Vandy games in recent years have been nighttime games. Not all of them. It's going to be chilly. Oh, it will be. Uh, it will be. Let, let's use this word: brisk. <laughs> Yesterday, brisk. Whew. Playoff game against Cincinnati, freezing. <laughs> Frigid. Never been that cold in my life. Y'all don't know what cold is. I'm telling you, I've been in some bad ones, man. It was below zero when we played in Nebraska at Oklahoma one year. <laughs> That's awful. I mean, my wife and my son were back at home watching it, and they were laughing at me. I was covered up. with They couldn't tell who was who. They only knew me by my mannerisms. I had a thing over my face. I had big jackets on, big thing over my head. Which one is dad? Just pick one out. There he is. We know the walk. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, uh, as we move on, it'll be frigid temperatures there. It uh, It is now in New England, and their head coach, Bill Belichick, has apparently come out and said that he wants coaches' challenges to be under two minutes. Uh, he was asked about a key play in the Vikings' thrilling overtime victory of the Bills, um, and and that's how how he kind of responded. He said he thinks the challenges should, should be under two minutes. Yeah, but the other thing he said was that the coach's challenge ought to be available under two minutes. I think that's what he's talking about, Billy. Oh, go, so go, not the length yeah, of it. Yeah, no, go back on that that story. It's it's that he wants the coaches to have the ability to challenge under two minutes left in either Thank half you. because that's been taken out of the coaches' hands by the NFL who royally screwed one up yesterday well, in the right. Buffalo game. I think he's right. Oh, I think he's right, too. I think he's right. I don't know why they did that. Why, why would it matter what time in the game it is if a coach wants to challenge or not? I, I don't I don't understand why it ever changed anyway. No, I think you're uh, I think you're dead on right. And I think uh, at the competition committee at the end of the season, he's going to get what he wants. Yeah, not because it's right. him, but because I think a lot of the coaches agree with that. Yeah, but it'd be unanimous. I bet I bet you're right. I bet you all 32 would vote for that. Next next piece here, staying in the NFL, Josh McDaniels uh, says the Raiders are building slowly uh, but painfully. He said, I have never used the word rebuilding or anything like that. It's the National Football League. There's not five years to do that. Uh, after another stunning loss uh, to the Colts, Jeff Saturday uh, picks up his first win while McDaniels and the Raiders continue to slump. He, he's full of crap. Um, I, I would I would stop the first word slowly, but the second one is true, painfully. Yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> what is there that they out. need to rebuild? This was a playoff team a year ago. Yes, they were. The, the truth of it playoffs. is that Rich Basaccia should have gotten that job, and instead Mark Davis went with Wonder Boy, Josh McDaniels. And, and, that team and, looks and, like and, crap. Coach, they brought in some big defense, some good defensive linemen, and the best receiver a year ago in the in the league, Devontae Adams. Give me a break. Yeah, I watched Please. a little bit of their game yesterday. Watson, I don't think they're playing very hard. I I'm not sure he ain't got real problems. And and he might want to be quiet because he might not make it. He sure ain't making it five years. He may not make it two. No, because I think the team right now is saying I ain't playing for this guy. Uh, that's the way it seems. When I watched yesterday, and kudos to Jeff Saturday for getting that first win as an NFL coach. And uh, Billy, I guess we move on from there. Let me kind of tell people it's the normal Monday stuff. We'll get Watson's analysis of the Titans' victory yesterday over the Denver Broncos. Then we will hear a little bit of Mike Vrabel's press conference. At 5 o'clock, Watson will release his top four in college football. Now, how does it compare to what we get tomorrow? Who knows? Only time will tell. We'll get to my studs and duds of the weekend. We've got a lot of college talk to get into. And then near the end of the show, Lipscomb University head basketball coach Lenny Acuff will be with us. Belmont and Lipscomb renew the Battle of the Boulevard tonight at 7 o'clock at Allen Arena.
So we got plenty coming. Stick around. This is Main Street Media Television. Buying or selling a home can be a very personal experience. Why not go with the team that receives nearly all of their business from referrals? Clearly a trusted name in real estate. The Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners has sold more than 500 homes in the last seven years. Voted best in Sumner County multiple times. Proven to be trusted with your most personal assets. Call the Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners at 615-906-8458. The Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners. Middle Tennessee's most trusted team in realty. I highly recommend Sumner Funeral and Cremation because of their caring nature and attentiveness to detail. Pre-planning your funeral now will bring you peace of mind and less stress to your loved ones. When the chaos of losing you happens, your family can honor and celebrate your life, knowing things are happening just as you wanted them to. Pre-planning determines the details of your funeral, cemetery services, and can be less expensive. We are honored to serve you and are always here for you in your time of need. Sumner Funeral and Cremation. Traditional. Affordable. Dignified. SumnerFuneral.com. Jody Jones Dentistry can handle all your dental needs from the basics to cosmetic procedures. All of this in the nicest dental facility I have ever seen. Jody has done it right. They're located conveniently at 55 Music Square East. And for an appointment, it's simple. Dial 615-259-5100 and tell them Plaz sent you. When you're thinking about golf, consider Riverside Golf Links. Under new ownership, the course has improved dramatically. It's now 27 holes, complemented by a nine-hole executive course. Book a tee time now at 615-847-5074 and get ready to enjoy the beauty of golf in the old Hickory area at Riverside Golf Links. I'm Bart Durham. I was sworn in as a lawyer in 1963, and I've been working as a lawyer since then. We're a firm that does exclusively personal injury, a lot of tractor-trailer crashes. Insurance companies will open up their checkbooks when you force them to. We have systems that work. We get the most money for our clients in the shortest amount of time. I'm Blair Durham. My dad and I want to help. Give us a call at 615-242-9000. This is Eric Berner with Rock Hassle Wealth Advisors. I help people in the pursuit of making their money live as long as they do. People hire me because I use a customized, individualized, and personal approach for the person I'm working with. Everyone's situation is different. If you've lost a spouse or a parent and want to make sure your inheritance is utilized and does not just disappear, I can help with that. Call me at 615-235-1058 or email Eric at rockcastlewealth.com. It is time for Watson Brown Titans Analysis, brought to you each week by the folks at Pennington Distilling Company. Repeat these words after me. A boring win is better than an exciting loss. (laughs) Even though it ain't fun to watch. Woo! You better be a fan to watch those kind of games, man. That's... (laughs) <laughs> only, only the diehards, man. Only the diehards, and we're diehards because we watched it. <laughs> it was oh. pretty basic with one fun razzle dazzle that ultimately helped win the game. But Watson, and we'll talk about that razzle dazzle. Yes. What happened? We will. Okay, let's let's go with the first point. 
which is Ryan Tannehill. George, all the people that were not Ryan Tannehill fans, look at the alternative <laughs> when he comes back. If Ryan Tannehill plays it against the Chiefs, I say we win the game. If we'd had any passing game at all, we win that game. If Ryan Tannehill don't play yesterday the way they stopped Derrick Henry, we lose that game. Ryan Tannehill may not be the best in the league, but he's the best we got. And everybody better be hugging him and not be getting on him right now because, man, when he don't play, we're in deep trouble. So I'm defending him in some ways, but I'm just saying without him, we got no chance. I mean, we just we just don't have a chance without it. Based on what happened yesterday, is there an official scrapping of the read option stuff with Malik Willis? Oh, again, the, if you're going to do it, do it more. Would you not say that? If you're going to do it, play him five, six, ten plays. Uh, I've not been for it all along. You know that. I've said that way back when. I wasn't for using a guy in different ways like that. He's a quarterback. He needs to learn to play quarterback. Uh, that could have cost him the game. I mean, it's a cold old day. You put him in at a very critical third and two or three, and you run a read play with him. And fundamentals again, George, when you teach those read plays, both of you, you put the ball in the in the back's belly. You're looking at your read. Your eyes are here. The ball's in his belly. You teach never let the ball go past your armpit. You make your decision at your armpit. He made the decision way much wider than that. That's telling the back, he don't know if I got the ball or not. That's what created the problem. Fundamentals of the read created that problem, not just being cold. But he did not fundamentally run that play well at all, and that's why there was a fumble on the play. Okay, let's go to item number two, which is simply the injuries. They're all over the league. I'm watching San Fran last night, and they played with about half of their – well, actually, let me take that back. It was the Chargers who essentially ran out of – Offensive lineman at one point. Well, Chargers is what happened yesterday to the Broncos. Right. The what, Broncos. Why, first of all, why is this happening so much? I know you've got a really strong I, theory I, about this. I still this. believe, I still believe these kids are not getting contact ready quick enough. And they're so, these bodies are so big and strong. And we keep adding games to the season. I just think there's a lot to this, George. And, uh, but before I get into the injuries, I, I'll say this, I'm, a, I'm, a, after watching the last two years, there's two things that need to change in the NFL. You look at the depth of defensive lines in the league. There's, there are a bunch of them. They're, they're deep across the board. Where's everybody having trouble? Offensive line. People are only carrying seven and eight because they got to have all these other positions to be on special teams. They need to add two more positions and make it 55 instead of 53. And I'm going to say 56 on the second piece. Let them have 10 offensive linemen. The Broncos yesterday played with three guys off the practice squad, for God's sakes. Yeah. And you wonder why these quarterbacks are getting hurt? And, and football looks awful? That was an awful game because our backup defensive line was killing those uh, – uh, Kids coming off of the practice squad, they're killing them. They we they couldn't slow them down. They could not slow down. And we had guys out, but we're everybody's deeper in the defensive line than they are the offensive line. So instead well, of carrying one extra center, one extra guard, one extra tackle, have five, ten linemen like you do the defensive line, and I promise you it will improve on the spot. Second thing. Don't just – they got to add a third one for a quarterback. Everybody carries depth at everywhere else because all those people can be on special teams. Offensive linemen can't be on special teams other than maybe a protector on a punt, and quarterbacks can't be on special teams, George. We need to add two more offensive linemen and a third quarterback, and then maybe our quarterback play doesn't look as bad when we go to backups. Well, it's and, embarrassing. And 
it's embarrassing that a sport that is making the ridiculous amount of money they are making has been this cheap. The owners should be ashamed Absolutely. of what it is th that they're doing. Fans are getting cheated in this. Oh, eight offensive linemen and a guy's having to play guards and tackle, guards and center. Why? With all the money in the NFL, why do we not have two centers, four guards, four tackles, and, and they practice that way all year? In college, you'll put guys in and out to rest. They don't do that in the NFL because they don't have the numbers to do it with. I just think that's a major mistake. But yesterday, George, think about it. We we didn't have – everybody hurt at receiver. We've had them hurt all year long. They had everybody out. Jerry Judy goes out on the first play of the game, and he don't play. Neither team really got a bona fide receiver. The offensive line situation for the Broncos just ruined the game. It just – it ruined the game. Injuries are becoming such a big part. We talk about them with the Titans. George, I bet you if we lived in Denver, you'd hear the same conversations. Absolutely. If you lived in Green Bay, you'd hear the same conversations. And they've just got to add more players. I look on the sidelines, and there's not that many bodies over there. They need to pay a little money out and make it 60 instead of 53. Make it 56 at least instead of 53. Quit being so damn cheap. I agree. Don't ruin a great game. Yeah. Don't ruin a great game because you're you're playing with people coming off of practice squads that aren't near good enough to play, George. The Jerry Judy injury was a huge one because it takes Denver's only real threat down the field and bags yeah. it. Yeah, when you're watching that game, you did not see a bona fide receiver on either team. The one that well, I'm talking about here with it when we get to the last thing, but I'll talk about the one with our receiver that where we ran the flea flicker and, and tell you what happened on that play. Uh, but the, neither team has a take the top off guy. And maybe ours is getting back from injury. Uh, we'll, we hope he, he didn't look very quick yesterday, George, to me, not at all. And uh, I mean, I don't know what Denver's going to do now. I don't know how long he's out, but they just don't have any skill on offense. They just don't have it. Item number three, I want all of you to listen closely on this because this is this is what goes into the box score sometimes as hidden yards, but it is becoming the Titans' best friend. Coach, the MVP of this football team is our punter. That's the MVP of this team. He changes the field. We're punting it every time we get it yesterday. And he's knocking it 60 yards and getting it dying inside the 10. He changed, we don't move the ball. We don't move the ball. We don't move the ball. But the other team's backed up. We gain about 10 yards every punt. Sure do. We punt it, then they punt it back. They're 10 yards short of where we're punting it. We're gaining field position and we're not even moving the ball. This kid is the MVP of this football team so far. We want to talk Derrick Henry. I think we've lost at least two more games if he wasn't punting it where he's punting it. And it's deep, and it's and he's got an unbelievable knack of that thing hitting and dying inside the 10. He's got an unbelievable knack. It, it's more like the exception when one doesn't die inside the 10 with him now. He's hitting it 66 yards yesterday, and it died. I don't know how you do that. But he's fantastic. Yeah. And he's leading the league in punting. Uh, MVP of this football team at 6-3 and three right now, i say he's number one. We know who number two would be because he's yeah, wearing his number, number is 22. 22. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it a different way. 1-1-A. One, one Let's go to item number four. I agree and with that. see that Watson deep down believes that too. Go. Well, here's what we're talking about. 75% of our passes need to come off of the ball touching number 22 off a of fake. I'm telling you, that, that's our best plays. You don't even have to put it in his belly. Just stick it out toward him, and everybody comes running to the line of scrimmage. I mean, everybody wants to tackle him, George. All these teams are coming in scared of him. They want to tackle him before he gets started. So they're just sprinting, even safeties. I'm telling you, I watch the guys, they sit back there eight yards deep. He's sticking out, and here they come running up because they don't want to wait on him. 
I'm going to hit him at the line of scrimmage. I ain't hitting him eight yards down the field. So put the ball in his belly before any throw, except when we get in third and long. Okay. But leave him in on second down. We're starting to take him out again some. Don't take him out. I don't care if you throw him a ball. Just fake it to it and then throw whatever you want to throw. Uh, the flea flicker, hand it to 22. Everybody comes running up. We caught Denver in man-to-man. -man. We were in a stack alignment with our two receivers. So they're, they're one's deep and one's up on one of our guys. We kind of switched the stack, George. They act like they're blocking just a second. And we switched the stack. The two guys run into each other and knock themselves down. There's nobody. They're both laying on the ground at the six six yards from the line of scrimmage. And so he's just running. The other one crossing the middle was wide open too. But the one running up the sidelines, there's nobody inside. It was un – I don't know if I've ever seen that. I remember when I was at Vanderbilt's offensive coordinator, we ran a trap where you pull a guard. Well, both guards thought they were the pullers against Tulane one night. <laughs> they run right into each other. The two linebackers on the other side – Ran right into each other. Our back broke clean for about a 20-yard game. That's about what happened yesterday on that play. They flat ran into each other, and both of them are laying on the ground. Watson, let me try this on you, and you give me some thoughts here. I'm watching the Green Bay game yesterday, and this young guy, Christian Walker, has a breakout game. And now there's a belief, hey, Aaron Rodgers has finally got one that can get separation. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, the Titans sort of had that a little bit yesterday as well with Nick Westbrook Aquina. Now, most of the time we've known him as Billy, help me here, NW. NWI. NWI. <laughs> Sounds like a you're listening to NWI. You're what what I'm asking is, Was it is one this, of your many stations called NWI that you've worked at. <laughs> If it was, I forgot about that one. <laughs> it might have been. Might George have been probably right. has too. He's had so many. <laughs> wow. You think that's funny, don't you? Yeah, you know what? I I'm going to throw something at the TV and see if this pin will go through. I, had, I could not. I, I could not pass that up. I, I'm sorry. I just couldn't do it. It. it was a softball. It was a layup. Yeah. And you should be ashamed over there <laughs> for helping start that. In what? fact, Started. In fact, <laughs> I started that. Well, sort of. I mean, you egged it on. Let me that, say that this. That was a little alley oop. The for difference me to Watson. between you and Watson is I can't put him on probation. <laughs> you can't. I I'm too old for probation. <laughs> if you, you put can't. me on probation, I might be gone <laughs> before it ends. That's what I mean. So, uh, you would never get me back. Do you see a possible breakout here, or was this just a one-shot wonder? He had one play where I thought he got a little separation. That one, he, the guys just fell on the ground. That wasn't separation. Um, but he had he did have one play where I thought he got some separation. Uh, he seems to catch the ball good. He'll go. He's strong. Uh, he's the only chance I think because I think Burks is just he's missed so much. He's a rookie. I. I, and Woods is just not the the guy, George. He'll catch balls for you. He'll catch crossing routes. He'll catch some hooks, but he's not that guy. And uh, he's not a one. The only one I think we got a shot to make that is him and use these tight ends a lot more than they're using them. Way more. Now, now both tight ends. What's the kid that made the big play yesterday's name? I can't get uh, it. Oh, right. a Conquo. Yes, he a can run. Me. Help me say that again, Billy. O Oconquo. Okay, so Oconquo. you're now a double secret. Oconquo <laughs> and Hooper are very good pass catchers. I would start using them a lot more, and I think I would try to force balls more at Akina just to see if he can be the guy. We'll see if they do that Thursday night in, in Green Bay. Okay, we'll go to the break. Great analysis as always. Um NWI. NWI, Georgia's 15th station. We'll go to the break and then we'll hear Mike Vrabel, part of his press conference earlier today. This is Main Street Media Television.
for Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly, they welcome every opportunity to serve and satisfy their clients. Whether you are looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and remodel is unique, luxurious, completed on time, and within budget. Contact them today to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects by logging on to DonnellyTimmons.com. At WellSkin Dermatology and Aesthetics, we pride ourselves in providing access, innovation, and a patient experience second to none. Access to care and treatment when you need it. Innovation with medical-led cosmetics and various on-site technologies for full-service treatments with a customer experience that is calming, casual, and effective. Independently owned, providing medical, surgical, pediatric, and cosmetic dermatology and more. Visit WellSkinMD.com to schedule your appointment today. WellSkin Dermatology and Aesthetics. Access to healthier your skin. It's your last chance to get a spring tune-up for summer. Complete Service Heat and Air can clean your coils, check out your motor, and make sure you have cold air on that first hot day of summer. Complete Service Heat and Air is located in White Bluff, Tennessee. We do service and repair on heating and air the right way. 24-7 service. Call us at 615-797-3997. That's 615-797-3997. Serving Cheatham, Davidson, Dixon, Hickman, Humphreys, Montgomery, and Williamson counties. Have you heard about the high levels of radon in Middle Tennessee? Radon gas is the second leading cause of lung cancer, second only to smoking, and has no color, no taste, and no smell. The only way to know if you have radon is to test for it. Duret Radon Mitigation offers testing for small and large-scale residential and commercial properties plus mitigation services. Visit DuretRadonMitigation.com to request testing or get a free estimate for mitigation. That's DuretRadonMitigation.com. Since 1865, the First Baptist Church of Gallatin on Winchester Street has served its community by catering to the least, the last, and the lost. Providing a church of welcome, used by God to save the lost, transform the saved, and impact its community. As a proud multi-ethnic congregation, Pastor Derek Jackson personally welcomes you to join them in fellowship Sunday mornings at 8 in person or at 1045 in person or online at firstbaptistgallatin.org. First Baptist Gallatin on Winchester Street, serving with open arms as a true church of welcome. To me, the best thing you can say about a coach is that he is getting 100% of what a team really has to bring to the table. Not often do you really get to a point where you say, that guy got everything they have. But I believe this year, for Mike Vrabel to have this team at 6-3, and that is exactly what he has done. No, it's not pretty. Yes, it's boring, but it's 100% of what it is they are truly able to do. Here's Mike Vrabel in this morning's press conference. More juice, Teresa. Let's go. I haven't had enough coffee. I don't care. Uh, Short turnaround. What's the biggest challenge? Is it just simply finding some energy, as you can see right there? For your team that is so banged up, how do you, you know, is nursing their. Monitor well, I think that's part of the message is just, you know, today is a Wednesday and a Thursday. Like, that's what it is. And we have to, to tell ourselves that. We have to tell our bodies that. We have to tell our minds that. But we also have to try to you know, do the best that we can to win the, the mental performance and the physical recovery battle here the next couple of days. Everybody deals with it. Um, you know, they, they had a, you know, a tough game against Dallas that they were able to win in overtime. So uh, they're, they're dealing with the same things. 
It seemed like you guys by design were avoiding Derek on third and three and third and two yesterday. Why, why go away from the bell cow in those situations? Well, there's some situations where we feel like uh, we're getting a you know, more advantageous look uh, when we do try to run the football. Um, you know, we, we can go back through the times that we've, you know, run it and, you know, there, there's, there's no answer. Um, but, you know, when we did hand it off, I felt like we had a very advantageous look and, you know, just didn't execute. We had, you know, should, should have been able to convert that. When you look at your defensive linemen that have been able to cycle in and produce <clears> for you, <throat> have you done a better job of putting them in position to succeed or coaching them into being better players? Well, I mean, I think all the credit goes to the players. They take advantage of the opportunities. Um, you know, they, they've stopped the run so that, therefore, you can, you know, have a chance to affect the game and, and, and rush. I think you earn the right to rush the quarterback. And, you know, this week will be the same thing. This, this team has rushed for over 400 or 200 yards in four games, you know, three of the four games that they've won. You know, so they, um, they, they can run it with the best of them. They got two great backs. Uh, looks like the line is, is coming together. They've had some moving parts there in the, in the past couple of weeks, but it looks like that's solidified. So this will be a huge challenge to, to play the run this week. How you look at the difference that? between the Chiefs game and, and yesterday, how much do you think went into you guys like putting the receivers in better positions to make plays as opposed to, to last week? Or do you think that was the players' door? I, I don't even – we're going to focus on how we can get them open this week and in the Packers and, you know, what, what they may try to play us in. Um, that that's really the focus is trying to uh, look to first and second down today and, you know, third down uh, tomorrow, not, um, not try to look and see each week, like who, who did a good job, who did a bad job. Like that's where we're all in it together. You know, it's going to have to be the protection. It's going to have to be the play call. It's going to have to be recognizing the coverage. It's, you know, getting the football out of our hand, finding the guy that, the, that we like. And, you know, that'll be, you know, a huge part of, of this week. And, you know, can we, can we convert on third down when we have to? And, you know, hopefully we can continue to, you know, we have to run the football better so that we can, you know, marry some of those play passes. Something good seems to happen every time you guys throw to Chig. <clears throat> seems like the natural progression would – be to go to Jay we would like Moore. to yep yeah that that would be you know trying to continue um to find ways to get him the football you know and you know again when when he's out there running a route the like i tell every player that's out for a route your job is to to get open and you know you can't control whether you get the ball or or not you know that that's up to the quarterback so you know, we'll continue to try to find ways to to get everybody involved and, and do things to help us. But, you know, yesterday he came through with a, a big catch. Ryan Ryan delivered a nice nice ball that was over top the linebacker. So, you know, I, I agree. Can you help me understand, you and Todd have said consistently with him, you you would like to, but there's you but you don't. So I, I'm, I'm trying to understand how, how, how it goes from liking to, to doing. We'll see where it goes this week and, uh, you know, as far as helping you out, that's probably the last thing I would do. How much is talked about the challenge, I guess, of the short week? I mean, do some things get eliminated? I don't know if it gets eliminated, uh, Jimmy, but you just try to do some things that you have a lot of bank reps on and a lot of confidence in. And, you know, there's going to be some game plan things that we have to put in based on what they do. Um, but I don't think things, you know, you know, necessarily get eliminated. You just are probably going to carry – you know, some of your base stuff and that you have a lot of confidence in and then, um, you know, add some, add a few things, but I don't think we could add a whole, whole lot. How much of Matt's offensive scheme and route concepts are similar to what he did here and, or has it been too long to go back and kind of. I think there's been that. some carryover, but I think there's been some new things and probably some things that the quarterbacks, you know, that Aaron liked that they've had, you know, that I would say that, you know, maybe we didn't do or Matt did when, when he was here. So, you know, each year things change. I think there's some concepts. You know, they do a great job running the football. They, they do. Um, you know, they run it from under center. They run it from gun. Um, you know, the RPO element, the quarterback is, is very good at that. Um, you know, making decisions and getting it out of his hand. 
frankly taking people out of the running game and having a few of them here recently abandon it altogether. Are you pretty confident that Green Bay is going to stick with it? Yeah, they did yesterday. They were down and, you know, when they, you know, wanted us to, to get things going, they they kept with that. They, they ran it 40 times and uh, I, I would imagine that that would be the, the plan. You know, they've, They've run it on every really good defense, you know, 200 yards against, you know, the Patriots, 200 yards, the, the Bills, and 200 yards yesterday, and, you know, on and on and on. So, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we're up for the challenge because, you know, they forced everybody to tackle. They forced the DBs to, to go in there and tackle. They put them at the point of attack, and, you know, that'll be a, a critical piece to the game. How did Ron come out of the game, and, and how do you think he – Play yesterday. Uh, I thought he was probably uh, average, you know, I think just getting back in there. I thought he made some good throws. I thought there were some decisions that, you know, he, he probably could have made that were better. Um, you know, but then also, you know, there's some, you know, everybody's kind of in that same vein, right? Everybody's got to be on the same page. We've got to, you know, protect. We've got to be where we're supposed to be. There, There's a timing element to it at times. And but, you know, Ron will be the first to tell you that that, you know, wasn't his best game, but he came through with some big throws when we needed it. He was, was able to scramble and, and get a huge first down, was able to recognize the blitz zero, uh, get us into a check and throw a touchdown. So there's a lot of a lot of really good things as well. I mean, like the way Austin Wilson got involved, you know, especially with some of those combat catches, I know that's the thing that you, you – really Well, you know, the thing I like most is he made a mistake. He jumped off sides. He fall started. He moved. Um, you know, he lined back up and called play. And – you know, made a catch and bounced off a couple guys and and got us a big first down. So that's really what I'm taking away, you know, from that was just, hey, that's a perfect example of a guy making a play, you know, not letting it affect him and coming back and, and being available for the quarterback and, you know, uh, fighting through some contact, breaking two tackles. Has Todd Downey done all of the play calling this year, Mike? Um, again, we've, we've been through that. As far as the play call, Todd talks to the, the quarterback. You know, so whether he calls every play, I tell him I want a play called. I, that's, but he talks to the quarterback. You satisfied with the way play calling's gone this year? Yeah, I'm, you, I, I think as long as the play calls are um, given to the signal caller in, in a timely fashion, and that we have time to get out there, whether it's offensively or defensively, make a call. Um, yeah, I think players are more important than plays. I think. Uh, teammates are, are more important than players. So hopefully, you know, we're getting these guys the call and they understand the details, but there, there's there's no magic call. Um, you know, we, we called a flea flicker yesterday. It was very well executed by the players and, and that's why we scored a touchdown. So, you know, we have to, to make sure that we're getting them the call, which I think we are and that we're communicating and, and the call that we're getting that everybody understands what's be, what's being asked of them. Okay, let's uh, l let's talk about that a little bit, Watson. This is an offense that needs all the jump starts and cheap yards they can get because God knows they have to battle for every last thing they get. The fan says you got to do this more. It works. Look what happened. Do they? Uh. More, I think it's just a feel. I don't, I don't, I can't say they're boring because of play calling. It's the style they run that makes it that way, George. And as long as they go through number 22 and they can stay within the chains and, and move the ball, I don't get as hung up in it. I, if anything, I'd like to see them myself. And I take up for them. I'd like to see them be a little more fake the ball to 22 and throw it a little more in early downs. And uh, that's the only thing I'd say. They struggle in long yardage. They, they're not good pass protectors. And that's not Ryan's best bag. And they're going to struggle with that. So to beat people, they've got to stay within the chains and keep that run pass mode going within the chains. I've not liked him when he does something tricky on those third and shorts. I just – I'm not big on that either. But I don't think it's the play calling. I, it's, it's rhythm that you get during a game. And, and, and sometimes we get out of rhythm 
But I don't think it's always the play call that gets us out of that rhythm. That holding call making it second 20 hurts us pretty bad. And uh, so keep running 22 and faking it to 22 and throwing it to the tight ends and now maybe Akina. And, and let's see how many points we can get and keep playing great defense and punt when we punt. Let him go, man. Let him knock the snot out of it because it's hard to beat somebody going 80 yards with the ball, George. Which is what got, yesterday this guy forced them if to If you do. go back and look, it's all year long. Everybody against us, we don't turn it over much. Everybody against us has to go the long distances. And uh, it's hard to score when you've got a solid defense like we got up front. It's hard to, hard to take it 80 yards and not screw it up. So just keep on the path you're on maybe a little bit more open in the first and second downs and the thirds and shorts, go knock them down and make the first down most of the time. And, and let me ask you guys this. In a world in the NFL and in a football world where you got to score points, the Titans seem like right now they have shown they can win with a, with defense and a punter like that. Is that enough to beat a, a Josh Allen or a Mahomes? It, it was almost enough to beat the Chiefs the other night with Malik Willis. In the playoffs, you know, when you're playing a team like the Bills or the Chiefs, is that going to be enough down the road? I, I, on, on a one-game basis, I said this after the Chiefs game, on a one-game basis, nobody wants to play the Titans in that one game because the style to me, Billy, is so different. And you've got that huge back. I mean, when you're playing, there's another back as good as Derrick Henry this year. His name's Quan Barkley. That kid is – but he's a different back. He's not – you don't have to crowd up there to stop him as much because he's a dancer and a darter. you got to worry about keeping him and not have the big play. But you cannot beat Derrick Henry when you're back up in a shell look in the secondary. You just can't do it. Nobody likes to go all of a sudden. It's like playing the wishbone to me, guys. You're playing all this wide open stuff, and then all of a sudden you play a wishbone team. It's a little bit that way when you play the Titans. You're playing the Chiefs, you're playing the Bills, you're playing the the Cowboys, and then all of a sudden here comes the old-timey knock-you-down stuff, and I don't think you want to change your style to have to go play that because it's a complete different defense you play against that style than what you've been playing for the last five weeks. So I think the Titans are a playoff-type team with what they do. I think they will be a tough out if they're healthy enough when the time comes. We'll go to the break. We'll have stat of the day, and then we'll get into the college stuff. Watson will give you who his four are and what all of it means when it really matters in early December. This is Main Street Media Television. was critically injured following a crash early Friday morning. Officers at the scene said the victim was driving a pickup truck when he lost control of the vehicle. The pickup veered left and went into a ditch. A front seat passenger was wearing a seat belt and escaped the crash without injury. The driver was not wearing a seat belt. He was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. This holiday season, the largest lantern event in the country returns to Nashville Zoo. After sunset, come see more than 1,000 Chinese lanterns. All new designs, including mythical beasts, a fantastical North Pole village, even a dragon soaring over your head. Welcome back to Zoo Illumination at Nashville Zoo. Bigger, brighter, and better than ever. Christmas for Kids is back at the Ryman this November 21st. Christmas for Kids provides children with shopping sprees, coats, and unforgettable experiences every year. This annual fundraising concert helps bring that experience to more kids. This year is hosted by Phil Vassar and includes Chris Young, the frontman, which is Richie McDonald, formerly of Lone Star, Larry Stewart of Restless Heart, Tim Rushlow, formerly of Little Texas, Essex County, and a whole lot more. Christmas for Kids, November 21st. To purchase tickets, go right now to Ryman.com. 
When I made the decision to host the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night, Strike and Spare is where I turned. And what a wise decision that turned out to be. They have five locations in our area with family attractions. They're perfect for birthdays, groups and corporate outings, and holiday parties. For more info, it's simple. Go to strikeandspare.com. Hit has become the baseball store in Tennessee. They have over 1,000 different models of gloves and over 1,500 wood bats. They also have several iron mic pitching machines as well as a hit tracks machine. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. We're proud to call Hit After Hit the official shirt provider of the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. Hey everyone, I'm John English. This is Keith Wallace, and we would like to welcome you to John English Antique Sports and Cards in Shelbyville, Tennessee. We specialize in graded and ungraded sports and non-sports cards, vintage wax boxes and unopened cases. We have a large selection of PSA graded cards. We also specialize in old sports collectibles, Baseball, football, basketball, golf, and tennis. You can find it all at John English Antique Sports and Cards. We are happy to be associated with Nashville's greatest sports antique, George Plaster. Welcome back into the George Plaster Show. It is about that time, two minutes till five here on the George Plaster Show. It's time for Stat of the Day, powered by John English Antique Sports and Cards over in Shelbyville, Tennessee. They've got everything you want if you're a sports fan, memorabilia, trading cards, antique and historical sports equipment, games, advertising, and so many other sport-related items. They're open Tuesdays through Fridays from noon to 5 and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5. You can find them on the web at johnenglishgradedcards.com. Don't forget as well about Eric Berner with Rockcastle Wealth Advisors. Give Eric a call at 615-490-7052 or visit rockcastlewealth.com for more information. All right, let's check out today's stat of the day. George, you got Watson back. That's always good news. I I need all the help I can get. I know Watson may say otherwise, but uh, here we go. Which NFL team has not scored a second-half touchdown since week six? Little hint, they were a playoff team last year. Hmm. Well, it ain't us because we scored last yesterday, second half, first one. You got the Titans. We, were, we would have been in that pile, but we scored on a flea flicker yesterday. Okay, I think uh... – I don't think it's Cincinnati. Do you? No, don't. Okay. Uh, New England. New England was a playoff team. I'm eliminating Buffalo. Possibility, isn't it? Yeah, they'd be there. What about... uh... Let's keep going. What about the Raiders? Uh yes, the Raiders. But didn't they score a touchdown yesterday? Didn't they score one in the second half against us? But it's the last six weeks. So what? last six weeks. They six scored weeks. one yesterday against Indy. So Woo. let's take them out of the mix. Tampa has scored touchdowns in the second half. Philly has obviously Scored touchdowns. Minnesota. I'm just going through. No, Minnesota scored. scored what them. about the Rams? You know what? Uh, the Rams scored yesterday on the final play of the game against Arizona. Arizona was a playoff team a year ago. And Arizona scored a touchdown yesterday. Watson. I honestly think it's New England. Denver has Denver ain't been scoring either. They, yeah, they, they weren't a playoff, playoff team, team, were they? They weren't a playoff team a year ago. 
No. Um, you think it's New England? Yeah. I, I, you go New England. I still think it may be the Rams. Okay. Let, let's put it up there. What? Nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. That's the Buffalo shocking. Bills had not scored a second-half touchdown in six weeks? Are you serious? Let me, let me huh? check. That's, that's crazy to me. This won't be a quick fact check, but no, the we'll, show, I'm, I'm going to try to. I'll say this. I'll say this. If that stat is not accurate, oh. It's Michael, so how many funny. weeks is that? that? How yeah. many, what's, what week was this? Eight? Nine. This is week. This is week ten. So it's only coming been, up, or this was this past. Th- this past one was. So that means four games they have not scored a touchdown. Whoo! I never would have got that one. <laughs> nope. So they didn't score in the second half le- yesterday. <laughs> okay, you keep looking it up. We'll do some yapping. By the way, we've reached the five o'clock hour. Is brought to you by. We have reached the 5 o'clock hour. It is brought to you by Middle Tennessee Bone & Joint. They combine state-of-the-art orthopedic service with a family atmosphere. No matter what injury you have, whether it's a sports injury, sprained ankle, or a major joint replacement, they've got the staff and training that you need. Visit them online at mtbj.net for more information. I wouldn't have gotten Buffalo if you had given me an hour to figure it out. I think I might have had them as them and the Chiefs as 31 and 32 to pick. (laughs) <laughs> Unbelievable. Man, I, I, I got to think that one through. You if need to look that up. I will. If that's true, all credit to Michael, but if it's not. But if it's not, we're going to rip him. <laughs> we're going we're to Arkansas. Him. We're behind him, win or tie. By the way, that. his season came to an end uh, Saturday. They did not – Harding did not get in the playoffs. Oh, they were man. really close, but did not get in. That's tough. Watson, let's reveal your four. The big reveal. The big reveal. Uh, we need a drum roll. I need to put a drum roll. Yeah, in there. we don't need a thing like that buzzer you have. Lord. I like Watson's drum roll. Okay. It was kind of weak, but. So I don't think there's any big surprise at this point as far as who the four are. I would assume that tomorrow night their deal would be the same. Yes, it it should be. But Watson's not on the committee, so we don't know. No, no, no. I am not and don't want to be. Thank you very much. You really Watson, wouldn't I, want what, that? Yeah. What, what? How would you like that? No. Uh, no. Uh, I thought I think work. you'd be. I think you'd be a good committee member. I'd have to give up too much golf here. Oh, good lord. They can For still the, they still hold play. On a second. They still I'd, play their golf. I'd have to give up golf, but that wouldn't be the biggie. I'd have to give up the George Plaster show. Oh, whatever. That's the biggie. The game that's that the has biggie. Given I can't you, do that. The game that has given you so much <laughs> and you turn your back on it in its hour of need. Yeah, I can't raise my left arm. I can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> it's given me a lot. Oh, it has. <laughs> I had mansion about four you, concussions. That mansion you live in in Cookville. Oh Lord, no! Okay. I love you. Know I'm joking. I, know. I would. I would do it again. I would coach again. Maybe not all the places I coach. No, but I would. You, you take the Nebraska job. <laughs> oh, oh Lord, have mercy. So, but George, y'all see what we got here. The one, yep. the one that, that I was su- honestly surprised that's TCU. They're, they're better, better than, than we were. thought. They're better than I thought they were. I think they. I think they're going to stay there. All we heard all week was they're going down. To oh, Texas I thought there. they were going. And let me tell you, Texas was ready. They were hooking all the horns. Oh, they the were place was that. wild, and they hung in there and dominated they get, Texas. They didn't get squat done on offense. Ewers is at least based Ooh. on Saturday night badly overrated and needs a haircut. Oh, he did not look good, and the look in his eyes didn't look good, did it? No. Arch Manning. I think TCU's legit. I think they'll beat Baylor this week, and then they're going. I don't know who they catch in the in the in their championship game, but I think it's going to be hard to knock TCU out of there. And uh, of course, we know in two weeks, ten days, nine. What is it, uh, maybe nine days or so? Ten days. Ohio State and Michigan will tee it up. 
see how that comes out. And if that's a close game, uh, that's I, – I, and, and I don't – I think, guys, I want you all to tell me what you think. I think there's only six that really are in this. There's six teams. I agree. And I think – excuse me, I think it's five teams. I'm not sure there's a sixth unless Southern Cal surprises me. But Because Oregon's out now. Oregon's done. Boy, the Pac-12 took it on the chin. Didn't Ooh. They? Ooh. You they see just later. lost a ton of cash in that weekend. <laughs> yeah. Football after dark didn't go real well. I think – I'm not sure it'll get past five with Tennessee. And the first one out, Tennessee bumps up. Um, and we know one's going to be out. Michigan or Ohio State's going to have a loss. And I think they'll go below Tennessee when there's that loss because I think it'll be Michigan. I think Ohio State will win at home. And I think Tennessee's going to hang there. So, you know, it, it, that game made Tennessee and Michigan, in my opinion, or Michigan-Ohio State loser a lot tighter when they saw that game, George. Watson, let me ask you this question. If the Tennessee-LSU game had turned out to be 40-27 to 27 instead of the beating – that Tennessee inflicted. If if LSU were to beat Georgia in the SEC title game, if that final score had been 40 to 27, would LSU get in? I'm not sure that that's the one thing Tennessee don't need to happen. Even with LSU with two losses, I'm not sure they need LSU to beat Georgia. Because they might just pop up there even with two losses, guys. Uh, Except now, they, they lose head to Georgia, head. They know they're out. They'll have three losses. So well, except that the committee will have this head-to-head right, of but, Tennessee and LSU, and Tennessee beat the hell out of them. But in the past, I know. they and love if, the, the and if TCU were to lose, we might get three in in the SEC. Michigan might be the one out, and TCU is already out, and it'd be Georgia, Ohio State, Tennessee, and LSU. Ooh. God. Think about it. I That's know. a possibility. You would, you would have to do it at that point. I don't think LSU's got any chance to beat Georgia, though, guys. I don't. That's a bad matchup. And then who else has got a shot left? Southern Cal, maybe, but they got to win out. They got to beat UCLA this weekend. That's they got to beat Notre Dame. I'm not That's sure it. Southern Cal's good enough on defense. Clemson is the only chance left if they beat North Carolina in exactly. the – in the championship game and North Carolina wins out up to the championship game, North Carolina would be high enough seated that that might give Clemson a boost. I don't think North Carolina beating Clemson, they would cause they just don't have the resume. So honestly, two teams on the outside looking in way outside. I think maybe three LSU got to beat Georgia. Southern Cal's got to run the table, and I still don't think they'd pass Tennessee. Do you all? I don't think they would. I don't think they'd pass Tennessee if they run the table. Uh, And then Clemson, even way past both of those. I think it's going to come from the five we got, counting Tennessee, put Tennessee right in the middle of this, put Tennessee right in the middle, and the sixth one is LSU looking on the outside with a shot of beating Georgia. And maybe, just maybe, they sneak in. I think it's going to come from those six schools. If the top five are Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and TCU, I think only Georgia and Ohio State have better odds to get in than Tennessee. I think Tennessee's odds of getting in are incredibly good. They're they're, they're better than – I'm not sure they're not the best of all of them because Georgia's not going to have an easy game against LSU. Tennessee don't have any games left, man. They're right. sitting there now in the catbird seat. And Ohio State, they're playing Michigan at home, but they've got to play somebody pretty good. Michigan's going to play somebody pretty good. TCU's going to have two more good games to play. George, I'm not sure, and counting Georgia too, Tennessee's got the best look of everybody because yeah. they got to play South Carolina and Vanderbilt, two of the yeah. bottom teams in the SEC. So I'm not sure Tennessee probably might have as good odds as anybody is getting in the Final Four. By the way, if you're just joining us, the Tennessee-Vanderbilt game will be a 6.30 kickoff a week from Saturday, Thanksgiving weekend of Saturday. That got announced 
earlier today. There are the other four. Tennessee, by far the best shot of those four to have a chance. Now, let's move on to studs and duds. We start with studs, and George, you're starting in the Big 12 with TCU. Man, did they get my attention because I had them mentally at a certain level. I thought Texas would beat the crap out of them. Take well, you them picked, you the picked TCU to win the game, didn't you? Uh, no. Oh, wait a minute. You're talking you about pick, you in picked underdogs. TCU and underdogs. Yeah, but I didn't believe it. Good job. Good way to remember that. Yeah, but I didn't believe it. That's why I'm sitting here listening to you talk, and I said, "My gosh, you picked them!" <laughs> I you thought, just said you thought they would kill them. I thought they would kill them. Okay. You were just really? going for points, weren't you? you I was just going saying. for points. Yeah. And let me say <laughs> they, this: now that I've got they're them, stud, buddy, they're yeah. stud, and they, they won't are. be embarrassing when they get in the playoffs. They'll play somebody pretty dang I'm good now. They won't be no they easy are. out. That's a rock solid football team with a savvy quarterback. That court, he should. He Max should be, Duggan's pretty darn good. He might be number one for the Heisman right now. Coach, that tailback's a good player. Yes, that tailback is a good player now. He's big kid. Had to be a weird environment for Gary Patterson. Saturday, Ooh, man, I, I heard he made worse when he lost on the other side. Yeah, Oof. I would love to have had a penny for his thoughts. Ooh, it wouldn't have been good. Ones. I wouldn't have liked that game if I was him. No, item number two. Stud number two, Washington. Mm. Michael Penix was incredible. Stud. Yeah. Probably played the best game as a quarterback all weekend. He made play after play, and they keep coming back. And, and uh, man, with everybody pulling against Washington, because everybody wanted Oregon hang in there. Yeah, I never saw that one coming. He upset the whole apple cart. No, I would have picked that in a heartbeat. It was double points, right? They were a double-digit dog. Double-digit dog, man. You're dead on. That's two in a row you got there now. Third one, Central Florida. Everybody thought, boy, this is Tulane's breakout. And instead, Ole Miss transfer John Rice Plumley ran wild. Over yeah. two lanes. He played his best game yet. Big win for UCF. And so far, it's pretty good. They've gotten better, George, as the years gone on. They have. Uh, I, I watched them early, and I went, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. The whole now, team's gotten better, but John Rice Plumley's gotten a whole lot better. Looks like uh, he's gotten comfortable. Yeah, he's comfortable now with what they're doing. That would not be one I'd want to play here late in the year. I wouldn't want to mess with Central Florida. Here's one I didn't see coming. Vandy. The doors. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, fantastic. To get that off your back, man, now you can go into next year. And they'll play loose now against Florida. I don't – I mean, Florida's gotten better too, by the way. Florida's gotten a lot better. Florida is starting to play much better football. But they went, They won the game. Look at the stats. It wasn't just given to them by Kentucky. And give Mike Wright a lot of credit, guys. Here's a guy got flat benched just – Go sit on the bench. We're starting the other boy, uh, the other young man. And he got his chance to come back and prove himself. He wasn't over there pouting. He made a lot of plays in that game. I think he was the main reason they won the game was him with his legs and a few throws, a few throws, but his legs he had over 100 yards rushing himself in the game, a 59-yard touchdown run that really got the momentum going. Uh, I think he's he was the – he was the main cog, so I'm, I'm proud of him. Congratulations for him. Now to the duds, and there are three in the SEC, beginning with South Carolina, who went to Florida, put a stamp on the envelope, and mailed it in. They're court, they, 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 they got that offense, it. golly, bum. Hmm. I, they just cannot move the ball very good. They did okay against Vanderbilt, but that offense is just – when I watched that, I just sit there and said, wow, man, they've got to do something on that side of the ball. If he's going to take the next step at South Carolina, George. They got to Dud do something number, on that side of the ball. Oh, big time. Dud number two. Two. How? I don't know. How could UCLA, with so much at stake, I mean, I know what the answer is, overlooked Arizona for Southern Trap. Cal this Saturday. Trap game. Whew. Wow. Arizona at home. This game, was, this game wasn't in Arizona. 
uh, it, it, it's at home for gosh sakes. Yeah. Uh, and their defense guys, it, they, them and Southern Cal, this game coming up Saturday, 70 to 60. 59 to 58. <laughs> Take the over. Take the over in this one big time. Item number three. Oh, Come, oh. He is on our duds every week. Oh, First of all, West Virginia is about to fire the athletic director, and then they're going to fire the football coach, and then it's going to be interesting to see if they want Jimbo. It's coming together, Watson. By the way, Brent Zwerneman, uh, who covers Texas A&M for the Houston Chronicle, will join us on Wednesday. Oh, five o'clock. Be there. He, I don't think he makes it, guys. I don't see how in the world he makes it. You can't. I think I, they got enough. Believe me, money is not the issue to the Aggies. Have you seen that buyout? What is it? Yeah, Eighty percent. Oh my I'm God. telling I you, mean, it's I think they're the upset death. enough to do it. I think they're upset enough to do it. The only way they don't is he had that number one class, and they might just say, "Let's give him one more shot." There's a but Bunsen. If I'm there. betting today, I don't. I don't think he makes it. That whole class might leave, though. Yeah, just watch. They may do it. And then this one, I cannot figure out what's going on at Kentucky. I know Will Levis has a really painful turf toe, but since that happened, they have gone in the dumper. So they looked awful against Tennessee. They looked awful against Vanderbilt. They looked like they didn't want to play in the cold. No, they looked like they needed jackets on, didn't it? <laughs> in their home stadium. Uh, Which had a ton of empties, and I can't say I blame them. No, it people didn't show up for the game because they yeah. think that they're going to beat Vanderbilt. We'll come next week to the Georgia game. And they're looking ahead, I'm sure, to Georgia. Not that it's going to matter. But, boy, they laid an egg. They went. And I sure don't want to take away from Vanderbilt. I thought they went up there and played hard. They had flu all week on the throughout their team. Mm -hmm. A lot of those kids didn't practice, and they go win the game. So give them credit for that. But my gracious, have they? Has Kentucky fallen off since the start of the year, George? Ooh, I'm not went. so sure. When they lost to Ole Miss back and they blew that game, when they blew that Ole Miss game in Oxford, I'm not sure I've seen them be really good since then. Yeah. They beat it's Mississippi a State bit. in a decent game. But other than that, I, they just hadn't looked good to me. Watson, I know their O-line isn't bad, but when you do have a bad O-line, can a quarterback hide some of it? I mean, if you've got a good quarterback to an extent? it Billy, he's just not played well. I, I hate to say it because I think he's really hurt his draft status. What What do you think it is today? I, I, I don't know. I ain't no way he's a first-rounder. He still I mean, will be. He, you think he'll still be? I don't. Somehow, Mel Kuyper's going to still have him up there. I don't. I, I think he's got to fall off. You anybody that goes in and watches these tapes in these last few weeks, he played very poor against Tennessee guys. Very poor. So doesn't he have to in combine settings? Well, really he better impress turf toe. Yeah, he could fall all the Bad way. To turf toe. He might even go all the way to third round. What I'm seeing, I. And maybe he's really hurt, and he's playing just really hurt. I hope for his sake he is because he's sure not playing very well. Let's go to the break, and then we'll get into more college football talk shortly. Stick around. This is Main Street Media Television. Buying or selling a home can be a very personal experience. Why not go with the team that receives nearly all of their business from referrals? Clearly a trusted name in real estate. The Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners has sold more than 500 homes in the last seven years. Voted best in Sumner County multiple times. Proven to be trusted with your most personal assets. Call the Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners at 615-906-8458. The Justin Tucker team with Platinum Realty Partners. Middle Tennessee's most trusted team in realty. 
I highly recommend Sumner Funeral and Cremation because of their caring nature and attentiveness to detail. Pre planning your funeral now will bring you peace of mind and less stress to your loved ones. When the chaos of losing you happens, your family can honor and celebrate your life, knowing things are happening just as you wanted them to. Pre planning determines the details of your funeral, cemetery services, and can be less expensive. We are honored to serve you and are always here for you in your time of need. Sumner Funeral and Cremation. Traditional, affordable, dignified. SumnerFuneral.com. Jody Jones Dentistry can handle all your dental needs from the basics to cosmetic procedures. All of this in the nicest dental facility I have ever seen. Jody has done it right. They're located conveniently at 55 Music Square East. And for an appointment, it's simple. Dial 615-259-5100 and tell them Plaz sent you. When you're thinking about golf, consider Riverside Golf Links. Under new ownership, the course has improved dramatically. It's now 27 holes, complemented by a nine-hole executive course. Book a tee time now at 615-847-5074 and get ready to enjoy the beauty of golf in the Old Hickory area at Riverside Golf Links. I'm Bart Durham. I was sworn in as a lawyer in 1963, and I've been working as a lawyer since then. We're a firm that does exclusively personal injury, a lot of tractor-trailer crashes. Insurance companies will open up their checkbooks when you force them to. We have systems that work. We get the most money for our clients in the shortest amount of time. I'm Blair Durham. My dad and I want to help. Give us a call at 615-242-9000. This is Eric Barner with Rock Hassle Wealth Advisors. I help people in the pursuit of making their money live as long as they do. People hire me because I use a customized, individualized, and personal approach for the person I'm working with. Everyone's situation is different. If you've lost a spouse or a parent and want to make sure your inheritance is utilized and does not just disappear, I can help with that. Call me at 615-235-1058 or email Eric at rockcastlewealth.com. Ah, uh, we are back. Hey, Watson. No Watson yet. He took off on me. Grabbed a little. You all, you all came back quicker. That, yeah. was, that was quick. Tell you what, it looked good on TV though. I mean, <laughs> you, showed, you showed good lateral movement. Sometimes we have to head in one one room to, when we have to go. You have to go, George. Watson still oh, got the, it. the burst. I get it. We won't. Uh, I, I, by the way, I jumped the computer right into the chair. If you saw that, <laughs> nice. Yeah, just right over the top of it, just like leaping a tackle. I, Jumped the computer and fell right in the chair. I would, or I would, because of that, offer you the seventy and older Heisman. <laughs> Open that door. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hey, appreciate you, you got me back. Noticed, have you noticed that for all of these openings that are out there right now on the college level already, you're hearing very little talk about any of them. Yeah, which is good for the schools to me. Keep it quiet and find the guy you want. What, why rather, do you think that's where they've been the way. case? Huh? How do you think that's been able to be the case? Is this I don't I don't know that people care. The football season's been so exciting, college football and and the up and down with every other team and upsets all over the place. I just think people right now. Now if you're in Auburn, Alabama. You're probably hearing it a lot more, but nationally we're we're not we're not hearing a lot about it, guys. And I think that's really good for the schools to be able to go quietly and find who they want. Who do you think at the moment are the top three at Auburn? I I I, I think they're going to hang out till they till Lane Kiffin absolutely behind the scenes says no. He said no, but that don't mean no. Yeah, the public's no doesn't mean a damn thing. Not anymore. 
And I mean, Hugh Freeze signs a new eight-year contract. They don't mean nothing. No. <laughs> I still think it's one-two. I think they're kind of waiting on Lane, and they may get the no from Lane. But that ego Lane has and want to take on Saban, I just that's he may have to just. But I think if it's – then I think it goes to Hugh Freeze. They've got to keep Cadillac on that staff, don't they? Somehow. You know, it, coaches don't – do that a lot. Um, and if they make that part of the job, they're not going to get the top dog coach they want when you start telling them who he's got to keep as a coach. That's one yeah. thing coaches don't want to listen to. They just don't want to listen to that. They're going to make their own decisions. I mean, he's doing a good job. I don't think he'll get the job. I, they're not going to take a chance, guys. They got to go big time in their mind. They're yeah. going to copy Nick's Alabama and what uh, Nick they They've got to go Brian Kelly level yeah, kind of stuff. I agree. That's what I think they're going to do. They saw that Alabama went through three or four. Then they finally said, the heck with this. We're going top dog. We're going top line, and we don't care what it costs us. And uh, I think top line would be Kiffin or Freeze. I think that would be top line. The reason I say that for Auburn, it would be top line because they know Lane messes with Nick. He's not afraid to take him on. Although they got very lovey-dovey before the game. Uh, they want lovey-dovey after the game. No. <laughs> Kiffin's son uh, came up and got a big hug from Nick. I, I was in yeah. tears. Oh, I know. It just it, it, You went emotional on me, didn't you? I really did. He had yeah, and then Lane it. don't even come up to him after the game. He goes no. over to Bryce Young. <laughs> he had to introduce his son to his dad. But I still think it's lame because they know he'll take on Nick and have fun with it, and I think Hugh beat him twice. He beat Nick twice. That's all they're thinking. How can we beat Alabama? That's their whole bag. Do you hear anything at Nebraska? No. I keep hearing ESPN people say Matt Rue. I don't believe that. I, I'm not sure Matt Rue would take that job. At Nebraska. At Nebraska, that's the right. name I keep hearing. The ESPN people throw out there the most yeah. is Matt Root. And I I don't know. I, did, I don't feel good about that one on either side. I'm not sure that's who they'd go after, and I'm not sure Matt would take that one. Do you believe Dion will be back at Jackson State next year? Ooh. I kind of do. I kind of think people might just pass one more time to see how far he takes Jackson State. And he may take them pretty good before this year's over. I mean, they're they're rolling, but they did hurt. His, his son got hurt the other day in the game. So, and that would really hurt him because he's a good player. He's yeah. a really good player. Watson, I always believed that one of the reasons that Tim Tebow did not get more opportunities when he really wanted – you know, that one last chance was pro teams saying, we're not bringing the circus to town. Even though it's not Tebow's fault, there's a circus. Do you think Dion suffers at all from that same mentality? I hope not. Because I, I in some ways, his circus, his pot, his confidence, the way he carries himself is a positive to me, not a negative. Um, I just think there still is he good enough? Has he proven enough that he is a top line coach? And if he goes ahead and wins out the rest of the year this year, then I think next year he might be. And he may get one this year, guys. He may. But if there's a hold up on him, I think it's that more than the circus piece, George, myself. Where's Bill O'Brien in all this? Now, let me say up front. O'Brien did a horse manure job with the Houston Texans. As a GM, he was a complete zero. Yeah, and but he's boy, catching, I hear his and he's caught some heat at Bama. He's catching heat this year. I, I he's not as hot as he was last year. Right. Anytime you lose two games, who are they gonna throw it on? The quarterback? Usually the offensive coordinator, not the defensive coordinator, yeah. and the head coach. That's the three dudes that catch the crap and and I'm not sure he's going to be hot when this is over because Alabama's going to ride this out. They're not going to lose another one now. And they're going to go to a so-so bowl. They'll go to one of the 
you know, Orange Bowl or something like that. I don't know if he stays as relevant after what's gone down. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I may be wrong again on that one. He may get the one right out the gate. He did do a very good job at Penn State now. We've got to give him credit for that. Yes, under He brought the Penn State program yes. back from just – Ashes under the worst circumstances. Yeah, much worse than James Franklin had to walk into. I mean, he Bill O'Brien's the one that got that thing started. Okay, I'm about to fire a hand grenade. Throw it. I'm gonna dodge it. There's no way to be critical of anything that Josh Heupel has done at Tennessee. No. But I thought he ran up the score against Missouri at the end. His players kept looking at him like, do you really want to do this? And I was shocked. I think if he had it to do over, he would. I I know why he did it. He thinks he's just got to really make a statement. He didn't do it to hurt anybody. He's making a statement. He's trying to get his team in that final. Oh, I get what he's trying to do. I guess – what I'm asking myself is, is the committee that stupid no, no. that they need that? 52 points would have served the same purpose 66 served. He didn't need to do that, but I think that was the reason. You get uptight, it's such a big deal. They hadn't been there. No, I mean, you don't get right. this opportunity very often, man. Where he's sitting in the catbird seat, you just don't get this opportunity very often. And I think he probably made a poor decision – down there thinking about it on the sidelines. We may point, we better, this may not be enough to make us impressive enough. And and uh, I would bet you behind the scenes he's regretted doing that. Do you think, Watson, in those kind of deals, does a coach pick up the phone to the other guy a day later and say, hey, I've thought this one over and I don't feel good about it. And I want you to know I don't feel good. Maybe he didn't. He will. He will. There will be a point he will at the SEC meetings, on a recruiting trail somewhere. I don't know about the next day because everybody's so hot, either fired up or down. Usually you coaches don't want to talk to each other the day after. That, that don't happen very often, good or bad. And uh, uh, I, it, he will apologize at some point because I think he already feels like, I didn't need to do that. Why did yeah. – and it, it didn't look good. It, it really no, did it, not. And it did honestly, not. George, you're right. Players were even looking over there saying, God, we want to keep And the Missouri this. players were pissed, yeah, and Dr- it was Drink- obvious. Drinkwitz was – he did not look happy. Man, Drinkwitz handled it well, though. He did. If you saw what he said, he said, takes two to tango. I never get upset. We don't want it to be 66. We need to do our share of this, stopping yeah. them. And uh, he handled it well, but you can – I've been in a few of those – I've been on the wrong side of a few of those, and I choked the coach. You know, I, 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 honestly, if I didn't know I'd be fired or go to jail, I'd choke them after the game. <laughs> and then I had one where I felt awful. We just – we and we didn't run it up. It just so happens it kept going up. We playing West Point after 9-11. Mm. Uh, we're the first game they play after 9-11. All games were canceled, George, if you remember it on when the – yes. Towers went down. The next week, West Point's uh, Army's got to come to us. You ought to have seen the security for that thing. And all those kids didn't know if they weren't going to war in a, in a week. Right. And they weren't ready to play. That We intercepted passes. Just all kind of stuff. Return a punt late in the game. I should have told him fair catch it. I felt awful. And I did apologize after the game. I said, I'm sorry. I know. I know. And the guy – I know him, Bill, Todd Berry, who's now the AS, director of the AFCA. He said, told, Coach, I totally understand. These kids, though, their their minds weren't in. They, no. We didn't need to play this football game today. Yeah. And I agreed with him. So I've had them on both sides, George. But I promise you, Josh Happel does, feels bad about it today. Feels very bad about it today. An hour and a half from now, Belmont and Lipscomb will resume their rivalry, Battle of the Boulevard, at Lipscomb's Allen Arena. Earlier today, we caught up with Bison's head coach, Lenny Acuff. You will hear that interview when we come back. This is Main Street Media Television.
For Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly, they welcome every opportunity to serve and satisfy their clients. Whether you are looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and remodel is unique, luxurious, completed on time, and within budget. Contact them today to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects by logging on to DonnellyTimmons.com. At WellSkin Dermatology and Aesthetics, we pride ourselves in providing access, innovation, and a patient experience second to none. Access to care and treatment when you need it. Innovation with medical-led cosmetics and various on-site technologies for full-service treatments with a customer experience that is calming, casual, and effective. Independently owned, providing medical, surgical, pediatric, and cosmetic dermatology and more. Visit WellSkinMD.com to schedule your appointment today. WellSkin Dermatology and Aesthetics. Access to healthier skin. It's your last chance to get a spring tune-up for summer. Complete service heat and air can clean your coils. Check out your motor and make sure you have cold air on that first hot day of summer. Complete service heat and air is located in White Bluff, Tennessee. We do service and repair on heating and air the right way. 24-7 service. Call us at 615-797-3997. That's 615-797-3997. Serving Cheatham, Davidson, Dixon, Hickman, Humphreys, Montgomery, and Williams and counties. Have you heard about the high levels of radon in Middle Tennessee? Radon gas is the second leading cause of lung cancer, second only to smoking, and has no color, no taste, and no smell. The only way to know if you have radon is to test for it. Durad Radon Mitigation offers testing for small and large-scale residential and commercial properties plus mitigation services. Visit DuretRadonMitigation.com to request testing or get a free estimate for mitigation. That's DuretRadonMitigation.com. Since 1865, the First Baptist Church of Gallatin on Winchester Street has served its community by catering to the least, the last, and the lost, providing a church of welcome used by God to save the lost, transform the saved, and impact its community. As a proud multi-ethnic congregation, Pastor Derek Jackson personally welcomes you to join them in fellowship Sunday mornings at 8 in person or at 1045 in person or online at firstbaptistgallatin.org. First Baptist Gallatin on Winchester Street, serving with open arms as a true church of welcome. Well, what goes on in November in college basketball oftentimes goes unnoticed. And we're not going to let that happen. By the way, Tennessee got ripped around pretty good yesterday at Bridgestone against the Colorado Buffaloes. That one caught a lot of people by surprise. Tonight inside Nashville, the Battle of the Boulevard. Lipscomb and Belmont go at it in about an hour and 19 minutes. Earlier today, we talked with Lipscomb head coach Lenny Acuff. Lenny, first of all, thank you for taking the time on game day. That doesn't happen very often, and I'll admit, oftentimes I'm embarrassed to ask for an on the day of the game, but I've hoped you and I were good enough friends that you'd say yes. No, it's my pleasure, George. I, like I told you, I'm so happy for you and your new show and love listening to it, and I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity, so I appreciate you asking. Well, thank you. Tell me a little bit about what this rivalry has been like since you've gotten here and how important is this to Lipscomb? Well, you know, it's interesting. My, my wife and I were talking this morning and I said, the people that live in Huntsville where we live most of our life, including me, really had no idea what this game meant until I came to Nashville. The second year was an awkward situation because of the pandemic. We didn't have many people here. We played at our place. It, it was a fairly close game. They got away from us late. 
Um, and then last year we were playing great. And the game before we went over to Belmont, Asan Asajala, our big guy, who we kind of, uh, you know, been our main guy for all three years I've been here. He got hurt um, the game before that. And we just, boy, they put it on us over there. So, um, but, I, but I'm amazed at, you know, what it means to, to the school. Um, you know, basketball is obviously a big deal at Lipscomb and at Belmont. And there's a lot of tradition. And so um, I think it's actually better that we only play once because it's just one shot at it. And, you know, we're glad this year it's at our place. Obviously, they are a handful over there. They're a handful anywhere. But when you go over there, they're really tough in the curve center, And as we found out last year. Lenny, is it still a scenario where guys on both teams know each other pretty well? Yeah, we do. We actually got together this summer and played some pickup. And, uh, you know, I I think it's I, – there's no one that respects Casey more than I do. I, I think Casey Alexander is a fantastic basketball coach. I think he's a better person. I consider him a friend. Um, and I said, just because they're your rival, they don't have to be your enemy. Um, that I think that's kind of a shallow way to live life. And But we have a ton of respect for him. But, yeah, our guys know each other. And, you know, a lot of times we end up recruiting the same players and um, – you know, and obviously I was good friends with Coach Bird and still am. And so just a ton of respect for them and what they do. And, um, you know, I think it's it's really good for the city to have two schools that, that play at the mid-major level. You know, they've had amazing success and Lipscomb has had their fair share as well. So, um, you know, we're just trying to keep up with the Joneses and hopefully we can play well tonight and give ourselves a chance. You sort of brought up something that I was going to get into a little bit later, which is Asan Asajula. When you've had him, y'all have been a handful to have to play. And when you haven't, not so much so. Yep. Now you've got him. You got to be pretty happy with that. Well, we are. And we needed to improve the talent around him. You know, it can't be that, that every single night hinges on him getting 30. And that's not fair to him. It's not a healthy way to exist in college basketball. Now we learned last year, the hard way when he went out, we weren't near the team. And so I think we've brought in better talent. I, I think we're, we have more offensive firepower around him, uh, better shooting around him, which has been very intentional to protect him. You know, you and I are baseball guys, George and the guy that hits in front and behind of you sure help. And, uh, you know, so we got to make sure we give him the right kind of support and, you know, we'll have to play really, really well. Obviously, they've lost a lot of guys, but, boy, they've recruited well, and um, they're really talented. Talk to me a little bit about this surrounding cast that you've got around Asajula now. I, yeah. I've seen Will Pruitt. There's no question that he's a big chunk of that. Yeah. Will's a winner, George. I mean, at the end of the day, he's an amazing young man. Uh, has tremendous uh, winning DNA, uh, has really improved since the day he walked on campus. But the reason he's improved, he works. The secret is there is no secret. Um, we'll start two transfers uh, with him. Uh, Darren Boyd's a transfer from Georgetown, Kentucky, who averaged 17 a game for them. You know, they're a stored NAI program. And Matt Snare will start for us as well. Matt was a first-team All-American at Emory. Uh, Division three player who averaged 24 a game last year. Trey Benham will start. Trey made the all freshman team in the A Sun last year. He's a really, really good shooter. And then we'll bring a couple of guys off the bench. AJ McGinnis, a transfer from Cincinnati, who's a high level shooter. And Jacob Obnakovich, who's a really, really capable scorer, who's a transfer from Valpo. So we've had to try to figure out a way to marry the transfer portal along with bringing in good high school players. And I think. Now that we're in our fourth year, we've kind of found our lane a little bit and probably have a little more comfort zone with it. Tell me a little bit about Belmont, or maybe I should put it as life after Moose. Yeah. With Musinski. What, what, what's different about them without him? Well, it, it's interesting watching them. Um, they, they're not doing, you know, Coach Bird and Casey have just been tremendous offensive coaches and their staples been four out one in motion and playing through the post. They're playing a little different now. We actually run a lot of the same things uh, that that they're running now. And so it's a little bit more five outs, a little bit more space. I, I, I think, and if anybody's watched them play so far, it's no secret, Ben Shepard, ben Shepard is elite. 
Um, I know they've had a couple of guys that have played in the NBA, and we have some NBA guys that have come through, you know, town to watch them practice and stop by our practice, and they just rave about Shepard, and uh, he'll have a chance. I mean, he's right there on the line of being an NBA guy. Um, I think he's really, really good. Uh, they got Drew Freiburg, a transfer from Princeton that started every game at Princeton last year and averaged 11 a game, and he's not a great shooter. He's an elite shooter, um, highly, highly experienced, highly athletic. And they've got two freshmen that are fantastic. Uh, Jacoby uh, Gillespie, who's from Greenville, Tennessee, who's a big-time football recruit and decided to go there and play basketball. Oh, he's a high-level player. He's going to be really good. And then they also, the young man that made the shot the other night that's, you know, his top 10 on Sports Center, Kay Tyson, the six seven shooter from Ohio, is a really, really good player. Um, just can really make shots and makes plays. He's a good player. Maybe from North Carolina. I don't know. I just know he's good and he wears number 10 for Belmont. I realize I'm putting you in an awkward position because you're not Belmont's coach. Yep. But how much does their recruiting change because they say Missouri Valley Conference as opposed to OVC? Well, I, I, I think a lot goes into it. I, I think it helps. I think you're being less than honest if you say it doesn't help. I mean, that's a top 10 league in the country. And one, they're more than capable of competing in. I, I saw they were picked six in the league. They're, they're not finishing six. I mean, they're going to finish better than that. And, and, and I don't think they're – obviously, they're not near as experienced as they were last year. I'm not sure this team doesn't have a higher ceiling. Um, now I'm not sure what's going to happen tonight. One of their players has been hurt, the Davidson kid who transferred from Tennessee Tech. But when they get healthy and they get – I mean, they're playing three freshmen a lot. They've got a high, high, high ceiling. Lenny, I'm going to throw this hand grenade at you, and you take it and run wherever you want, maybe out the door, but let's see. Yep. You're, you're a guy that loves college basketball and wants what's best for the game. I'm one of these media people that will sneak over to games that I don't necessarily have any reason to go to other than I'm a college basketball junkie. It worries me that we're starting this too early and that you're still in the middle of football. Most of my yeah. show today will be football. I just think it's a shame, and I would push it back and tell CBS, look, we're going to play in April. Deal with it. Yeah, you know, George, I'm on the NABC Board of Directors, which is the National Coaches Association, and that's something they've talked about. I, I just think that they kind of dug their heels in there and we'll see where it goes. I, 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 I totally agree with you. You know, I'm an Alabama guy and I promise you right now, there's not one word being said about football in Alabama, maybe a little bit more this fall than it falls past though. Um, but if something said about basketball, maybe more so, uh, than falls past. Um, and really, you know, your window for college basketball is after, you know, quite honestly, after the first of the year, there starts being interest, and after the Super Bowl is when it really ramps up for the novice fan, not like you. Um, and then March. The thing that I probably have the greatest frustration with with college basketball, everything hinges on the tournament. Uh, I guess it was it two years ago that Belmont won 27, 28 games and lost in the finals of the conference tournament and didn't make the tournament. Um, and the perception well, the NIT was, for that. Man. Yeah. I mean, the perception is you haven't had a great year. My goodness. They won 27 or 28 games. Um, I wish there was more emphasis put on the regular season. And, and you, to your point, maybe if you started a little bit later, that would marry that. Listen, thank you for taking the time to come on with us as a fellow Braves fan. Yep. Good luck tonight. Okay. Thank you guys. Hope you have a great day. Thanks, George. This holiday season, the largest lantern event in the country returns to Nashville Zoo. See more than 1,000 Chinese lanterns. Welcome back to Zoo Illumination at Nashville Zoo. Bigger, brighter, and better than ever.
Hit After Hit has become the baseball store in Tennessee. They have over 1,000 different models of gloves and over 1,500 wood bats. They also have several Iron Mike pitching machines as well as a Hit Tracks machine. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. We're proud to call Hit After Hit the official shirt provider of the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. A man was critically injured following a crash early Friday morning. Officers at the scene said the victim was driving a pickup truck when he lost control of the vehicle. The pickup veered left and went into a ditch. A front seat passenger was wearing a seat belt and escaped the crash without injury. The driver was not wearing a seat belt. He was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. Christmas for Kids is back at the Ryman this November 21st. Christmas for Kids provides children with shopping sprees, coats, and unforgettable experiences every year. This annual fundraising concert helps bring that experience to more kids. This year is hosted by Phil Vassar and includes Chris Young, the frontman, which is Richie McDonald, formerly of Lone Star, Larry Stewart of Restless Heart, Tim Rushlow, formerly of Little Texas, Essex County, and a whole lot more. Christmas for Kids, November 21st. To purchase tickets, go right now to Ryman.com. When I made the decision to host the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night, Strike and Spare is where I turned. And what a wise decision that turned out to be. They have five locations in our area with family attractions. They're perfect for birthdays, groups and corporate outings, and holiday parties. For more info, it's simple. Go to strikeandspare.com. Welcome to the Omni Nashville Hotel. Urban elegance with a vintage touch. Our 800-room hotel opened up in the fall of 2013 with 746 guest rooms and 54 suites. Welcome back into the George Plaster Show. It is now time for Plaster's Bet of the Day, powered by Bart Durham Injury Law. Since 1975, Bart Durham has aggressively protected the rights of a broad range of victims of car accidents and personal injury in both Tennessee and Kentucky. If you, too, have seen your life interrupted by an injury on a highway, in a hospital, or at your workplace, let their attorneys do the work fighting for the full financial compensation that you need. Learn more about Bart Durham, Durham Injury Law by logging on to Bart Durham. Dot com and George, I know you have a have a few words coming up here about a moment's peace. Yes, I am. And uh, here's the deal. First of all, we welcome the folks at a moment's peace to our show. With the holidays coming, you're trying to figure out a way to get a few brownie points from the woman in your life, and oftentimes that can be a dicey proposition. You don't know what to get. You don't know how to get it. And it's just one big headache. Doesn't have to be that way. A moment's peace salon and day spa can do it all for you. Whether it's as simple as a gift certificate, a manicure, a pedicure, a massage. You know what? Any way you go with that, you're going to score brownie points. 
Now, before I go any farther, I use my trusty phone on this because I got to make sure I get this part right. You can do this as simply as ordering online a momentspeace.com. Watson, listen closely forward slash Christmas. A momentspeace.com forward slash Christmas. So there. There Got it is. It. Now. Okay. Are we ready for the results here? Oh, yeah. So, George, you had an LSU push. So, no win, but no loss. Yes. Accredited to your uh, win loss record. I appreciate the fact that you all kept up yep. close enough to know that. Great job by Michael. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati and Tulane lost. Those two bets lost, but you won the Oklahoma State bet and the Titans bet. So, you are now 70 and 72. And what is that percentage? Well, it's 49.3%, but I've got one in the on-deck circle. If Philly covers the tease line, which was minus four and a half when we did this on Sunday night, all of a sudden we'd get within one game of 500. But I have come with a play tonight. Let us reveal. A little college basketball. A little college hoops. Minnesota at home, a point and a half dog, excuse me, a point and a half favorite against DePaul. Watson, we're taking the Golden Gophers. Wish I could help you with that one. I know nothing about either one of them just yet, George. Sorry, I'm one of them fickle fans that's just not into basketball much yet. Other than the ones around here, I keep up with ones around us. But here, Here's the dangerous part. Watson, I'm going on the assumption that DePaul is what they've been for the last decade. Not very good. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Sometimes you have to go on a little name recognition. We'll see if it all works out tomorrow. I feel good about E-A-G-L-E-S. They're really good. And unless Taylor Heineke has a big, big game, Philly will cover the second part of the teaser that I threw out there. Boom. So, I mean, this, when you say that, again, I don't know about all the stuff you're talking yeah, about. The, the this, first is this part, a two, what's this, the teaser mean? Well, teaser is a two team deal. You got to win both sides. Got, is we, this in the teaser? Yes. We teased okay, down so you last win both night. Days, you, you win one game. Yeah. Last yeah. night, we teased down San Francisco to minus one. And they had a great second half comeback to get that done. Yep. They Tonight, did. We've got Philly minus four and a half as the second piece of it. So that could win you one, and then this one could win you one. So you could come in tomorrow 500. And God help you if I do. Oh, I, I, gosh. God, God help all of us. I'm yeah. going to put earplugs in if that's the case. So. Watson, if I win both games tonight, do you know what my percentage will be? Yeah, I think I do. Good. I think my Vanderbilt degree would help me to say I, it would be 50%. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that you were still awake. Thank you. I got, got that one figured out, buddy. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you, <laughs> you take care until tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Billy, you just behave, period. I'll do my best. Got a good show for you tomorrow. Tony Basilio will be the leadoff hitter at 420. This is Main Street Media Television.